Oh. Awesome. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Food as Medicine, Bone Strengthening Plant-Based Foods, um, sponsored by the Black Veg Society and presented by me, Tony St. Clair, to Self Total Health. Um, kudos to you for taking time to invest in you and your health and wellness. So as always, if you've been to these events before, my commitment to you is to provide you with a content-rich presentation in a format that's easy to understand and interactive. I also know how frustrating it can be to get really good information but not know how to implement it. So that's why there's going to be tools and resources, a Q&A, and a food demo to guide you and give you a jump start. So here's a few housekeeping issues. Um, we're going to have to answer questions at the end of the presentation. I'm probably going to divide it at the end of my part before we have our guests on. Um, and so you can post your question in the chat as we go along, or you can ask to speak by raising your hand using the raised hand icon at the end of the presentation. Everyone is asked to remain muted to eliminate distractions during the presentation. And also we invite you to complete a very short survey at the end of the webinar. Everyone who completes the survey will also receive a free 12 month vegetarian journal subscription. Um, stay to the end. You also can receive a link for immediate access to a bone health assessment. And of course, stay until the very, very end, immediately following the presentation, Chef Karen Osborne will be doing a food demo and sharing her favorite recipes to support your bone health. I'm super excited for you all to meet her. Finally, everyone who registered will be able to participate in the raffle drawing. Whether you came here or not, everyone who registered is going to be able to participate in a raffle, uh, raffle drawing to win and receive immediate download access to a healthy vegetarian recipe starter guide with breakfast, lunch, and dinner and juice recipes. So, Lots and lots of valuable information to show our appreciation for you investing time to learn and hopefully implement life-changing information. Food is medicine. Uh, someone has asked that a live transcription be available, so I'm going to enable that. There we go. So food is medicine. The beauty of food is medicine is that the choice to heal and promote health can begin as soon as the next meal, right? So food is either nourishing the body or breaking it down. What you eat either improves your health or depletes it. There is no neutral effect. So real food, real whole minimally processed food, not food like substances provides nutrients to support your mental and physical health. Now nutrient insufficiencies and deficiencies are the root cause of disease, discomfort, dissatisfaction with how you look and feel can impact the functioning of every system in the body. So nutrition, along with lifestyle practices, will give you a conventional medicine can't, a way to get well, not just feel better, because that's what you're here for, right? I hope. A little bit about me. So I came on a little earlier and introduced myself. My name is Tony St. Clair Fish, and I'm super excited as always to be your host for this uh, webinar. I am a functional health coach, a nutritional endocrinology coach and educator, a personal and professional development coach, a raw food chef and instructor, and a yoga instructor. I'm also a founding board member of the Black Veg Society. Just a little bit about me. I've been the proud owner and CEO of True Self Total Health for about 11 years, assisting and guiding people who have forgotten or perhaps have never learned how to stay healthy and balanced in their minds, bodies, and spirits. Now, among other things, I help people to detoxify their bodies and minds, learn how to eat healthy foods, and improve their overall health and wellness. Now, as a behavioral change expert, I help my clients bridge the gap between where they are and where they want their health and wellness to be by guiding them in understanding, identifying, and relying on their innate strengths and wisdom to create meaningful goals, inspired action steps, and sustainable lifestyle practices. I'm also a functional health and wellness coach and healthcare team member for Capital Integrative Health in Bethesda, Maryland. It's an integrative health practice that combines the best of conventional and complementary medicine. So why did I share all that with you? I shared all that with you just to let you know that, um, whoops, go back up, that my background, training and education uh, just means that I'm qualified to do um, this presentation. And those of you who have followed me, um, you know that we have, I've been doing this for about two years. I really love it. It's probably my favorite thing to do, um, education. All right, here we go. Disclaimer, super important that you read this, but if you don't want to read it, there are two things I want you to know regarding this disclaimer. This presentation is meant to be educational only, emphasis on educational. It's a sharing of information based on my experience and training or the experience of experts that I rely on or that I invite to join us. It's not intended as medical advice. 
I'm not treating, curing, diagnosing any condition or illness. So if you have a condition that requires medical attention, please seek it. And number three, very important, if you are inspired to implement a change, no matter how small, please share what you're doing with a licensed and qualified and trustworthy health practitioner, especially if you're taking medications or you have a chronic condition. I want to keep you all safe, right? But information is powerful. Um, implementation is more powerful, but you want to do it safely. So here's what you're going to learn, and I hope that's what you came here to do, <laughs> learn the importance of building and maintaining bone health after age 30, factors that affect bone health, food and nutrients that weaken bones, nutrients for bone health, herbs for bone health, top plant-based bone building foods, and assessing your bone health. And finally, um, how to prepare delicious and nutritious bone strengthening food with Chef Karen. And the recipes will be included. We're going to pin the, the, a resource document at the top of the chat uh, when we're done. So I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can so that we can spend as much time with her uh, since she is the bone strengthening, bone making expert. All right. Let's move on. So healthy bones matter. Yeah, healthy bones do matter. And in case you don't know why they matter, they have many roles in the body, providing structure, anchoring muscles, protecting organs, producing blood cells and storing mineral, minerals. So supporting your body and helping you move, your bones literally help you hold up and keep it from collapsing to the ground. Your posture depends on your bones. You also need to be able to co coordinate your bones and shift your weight around them in order to move. They protect your internal organs. Your bones help your organs um, stay safe from heart impacts and punctures and other forms of inju injury. So for example, your ribs protect your heart and lungs and your skull protects your brain, brain. They also produce blood cells. In case you didn't know that, there's certain types of bones that make platelets, red blood cells and white blood cells. And these cells are, are made inside the bones. Platelets help, help your blood to clot. Red blood cells help to deliver oxygen to your organs and white blood cells help to fight off infection. So that's a really important function. Um, and then finally, super important too, your bones will release the minerals um, that's stored in them um, when your body needs them to help keep your pH, pH at the pop, proper level. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we, when we go along. So um, finally, your, your bones are living tissue. You're continuously changing. New bone is made and old bone is broken down. So when you're young, your body makes new bone faster than it breaks down old bone and your bone mass increases. Now, most people reach their peak bone mass around age 30. After that, bone remodeling, as they call it, uh, continues, but you lose slightly more bone mass than you gain. So how likely you are to develop osteoporosis, a condition that causes bones to become weak and brittle, depends on how much bone mass you attain by the time you reach age 30 and how rapidly you lose it after that. Healthy lifestyle practices, including good nutrition are important at any age, but especially important after age 30. And we'll be discussing this in greater detail uh, later on in the presentation. So I hope that you all really understand that um, bones definitely need to be um, nurtured and loved on a little bit. Okay, bone health facts. Let's talk about bone health facts. Um, did you know that bones are supposed to be hard to break? They are. They're supposed to last a lifetime. Unfortunately, unless you know how to take care of your bones, things can go awry and they may become brittle and, and prone to fracture. Did you know that according to the National Osteoporosis Foundation, 55% of people over 50 have osteoporosis or porous bones and 80% of them are women. And we'll talk about why later. And a whopping 75% of people over age 70 have osteoporosis. And the cost of weak bones is staggering, both financially and to your loss of quality of life. Now, a big part of the osteoporosis epidemic is the overly processed, nutrient-depleted diet that most people in the modern world consume. So add to the nutritional deficiencies and excesses a sedentary lifestyle and stress, and you have a recipe perfect um, for osteoporosis, protecting your bones needs to become a priority in your earlier years so you don't become a statistic in the later years. Most people also don't realize that bone is actually living tissue containing a plethora of minerals. 
So um, most people think it's static and it's never changing, but it is because it's a limbic tissue. So it, it's, it's a breakdown of old bone and a build cycle that allows you to continuously have fresh new bone. And bone growth usually stops after puberty, but because of the balance uh, of the interaction of breakdown and buildup activity, your bones are ever changing. So every 10 years, every 10 years or so, you have a completely new skeleton, right? So I hope that excites you, right? That you know that um, weak bones do not have to be permanent, not at all. Oops, going back one slide. There we go. So yeah, weak bones don't have to be permanent. The good news is that bones, uh, about bones is that they're living tissues. So a diagnosis of osteoporosis or osteopenia does not mean that you have to permanently do that. Lifestyle um, changes with nutrition and movement and stress um, can reverse that. And Karen will be talking in greater detail about that later as our expert, our resident expert, okay? Our guest expert. Let's talk about factors that affect bone health. Nutrient deficiencies, physical activity, diseases and disorders, tobacco and alcohol, hormone levels, medications, and an acid alkaline balance. These are the main ones. Um, some of you may be aware of some of them, so we'll just go do a, a little a small deeper dive, not a big deep dive, but a short dive into each of them. So nutrient deficiencies, this could be the actual intake of nutrients or malabsorption of nutrients due to impaired digestion. When I work with my clients, it's usually a combination of both, um, that you're not taking the right nutrients or the nutrients that you are taking just aren't getting where they need to go. And physical activity. People who are physically inactive have a higher risk of osteoporosis than their more active counterparts. Why? Because exercise obviously strengthens bones and allows it to grow. Um, disease and disorders. Rapid bone loss and increased fracture risk are implicated in a range of autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease. Tobacco and alcohol use. Research suggests that tobacco use con contributes to weak bones. Similarly, regularly having more than one alcoholic drink a day for women or two for men may increase the risk of osteoporosis. Hormone levels. And this is where um, it pertains uh, to women for the most part. Um, too much thyroid hormone can cause bone loss. In women, bone loss increases um, dramatically at menopause due to dropping estrogen levels. And a prolonged absence of menstruation before menopause also increases the risk of osteoporosis. So this usually sometimes happens with athletes, athletic women. So in men, low testosterone levels can also increase a loss of bone mass. And of course, there's certain medications that are going to um, impact your um, are going to impact uh, your um, bone health. Long-term use of um, steroid medications such as prednisone, cortisone, prednisone, the I said that already, all the zones um, is damaging to the bone. Now, other drugs that might increase the risk of osteoporosis include aromatase inhibitors to treat breast cancer, um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, um, some anti-seizure medications um, and, and proton pump inhibitors. Yeah, so medication, no bueno, just generally speaking, but particularly when you are trying to manage bone health, not good at all. All right, and finally, the acid alkaline balance. So there's an internal uh, environment of your body that uh, is maintained at a slightly alkaline pH level between 7.35 and 7.25. Four or five, according to Dr. Um, Russell Jaffe, who's an expert on the subject, and so is Karen, and she'll talk to you a little bit more about that. So in order to keep that tight range, um, your body will um, pull, if you're totally, if you're too acidic, very rarely are we too alkaline, it will pull minerals from your bones um, to support homeostasis and to keep you alive. And so, of course, that's going to weaken your bones. All right. And I'm going through this pretty fast, but I want to make sure that Karen gets an opportunity to share with us her knowledge. All right. Let's talk a little bit now about food and nutrients. And I use food in quotes for some of these and nutrients that weaken bones. High salt intake. For every 2,300 milligrams of sodium you take in, you lose about 40 milligrams of calcium, right? That may not seem like much, but over time, amounts to a considerable bone loss. Don't want to do that. Soft drinks. I hope people aren't still drinking them, but the combination from 
um, phosphoric acid increases calcium excretion, right? The very thing that your bones need. Um, the sugar um, also depletes your B vitamins. Caffeine, for every 100 milligrams of caffeine, the amount um, in a small, medium-sized cup of coffee, you lose about six milligrams of calcium. So coffee, tea, and colas containing caffeine are also acidifying the body. We talked about that earlier. And when your body's acidified, it throws off that delicate acid alkaline balance and it leads to bone breakdown because the body has to um, leach from the bones to keep you alive. Um, alcohol, alcohol blocks the absorption of calcium and other bone fortifying minerals you eat. Heavy drinking can even disrupt the bone remodeling process, the bone building process. By um, So you wanna make sure again, keep your alcohol content um, low or not do it at all. So not only do bones become weaker, but when you do suffer a fracture, alcohol can def definitely interfere with your healing. Hydrogenated oils, heated and oxidized oils. So the process of converting liquid vegetable oil into solid oils is called hydrogenation because hydrogen is used to saturate the carbon bonds and that destroys vitamin K. Vitamin K is essential for strong bones. Also conventional methods of oil extraction results in exposure of those delicate bonds to heat, air, and light results in resulting in oxidation of the oils. So in addition to destroying the nutrients, right? Cause then, you know, being exposed to oxygen is useless. It triggers a cascade of free radical activity that causes um, cell destruction. All right, moving right along. I know this is a lot of information. So I just want you to take a breath and know that, um, even if you are doing some of these things, if you just stop doing one or two of them, you may find that you're gonna um, end up with um, a, a better handle on your bone health. Okay, um, my computer is, well, is um, has decided to go to sleep. So I'm gonna sit here and try to wake it up. Hold on just a moment. Thank you for your patience. While we're waiting, just take a breath. So my computer can take a breath too. Seems to be frozen. There we go. It woke up. All right, let's talk about sugar. We talked about that a little earlier. Ingesting sugar has been shown to deplete your body of calcium. Um, gluten, protein found in wheat, rye, barley, camut, spelt, you know, even those ancient grains um, does more than create intestinal damage in sensitive individuals. Studies show a very strong correlation between bone loss and gluten, and gluten and sensitivity, right? So there's also the bone loss that happens with that. So the fact is partly due to inflammation, right? And damage to the small intestine and the fact that you have malabsorption, you know, partly, partly due to the acidifying effect of the gluten and to the immune um, mediated uh, inflammation that's gonna happen to uh, when you have that sort of activity that's happening in your body. Refined grains, no good, definitely um, depletes uh, micronutrients. So you definitely don't want to do a whole lot of that. Again, my computer keeps going to sleep. I do not know why. I'm gonna try to get it to stop. There we go. And of course, um, excessive protein, uh, dairy, dairy, <laughs> dairy does a body good. It doesn't. Um, um, the, the benefits of dairy are, are null because once you, um, the calcium that you get is really pretty much destroyed um, because of the acidity, the protein um, causes the phosphorus and the calcium to cancel each other out. So you definitely don't want to rely on dairy for your, um, for your, uh, for your calcium needs because it just because of the way dairy is processed and all that and again because of the excess protein and and it throws the phosphorus off it's just a little bit of calcium you get it's not worth it and um, your body again has to leach it actually has to leach more minerals from the bone to try to process that out uh, nightshades some people are sensitive to nightshades like eggplants and um and tomatoes and all that so um, that could cause um, your body to be acidic. And again, it will leach from your bones to keep you at that delicate alkaline acid balance. And of course, excess vitamin A, I've not seen too much of that in my practice, but uh, apparently it does exist. All right, moving right along. Now we're going to talk about the nutrients for bone health, which came here for 
um, calcium, boron, chromium, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, potassium, silica, protein, omega-3 fats, probiotics, uh, strontium, uh, zinc, vitamin A, B12, B6, vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin K. Whew, that's a long list, right? These nutrients not only support bone health, but just health in general, because these nutrients support many functions in the body. So it's not just for bone health. You know, it's, it's functioning, other, it's um, helping support other functions. Now, I did a food as medicine presentation covering plant-based food sources for most of these nutrients uh, listed, as well as providing a nutrient assessment chart. So I want you to visit the uh, Black Veg Society YouTube channel and look in the food as medicine playlist for the recording. Don't you worry, there will be a link in the um, in the resources document that we will be sharing with you. All right. Now I just decided to take um, some new some some of those nutrients, just a few of them, and so you can see the whole plant um, sources. Um, calcium. Then you look at the the plethora of places that you can get that um, that you can get calcium in your body without adding acidity to the body and breaking the body down instead of building bones. So there's cabbage and broccoli and spinach and llama beans and collard greens and kale, mustard greens, sesame seeds, flax seeds, and almonds, and there's more. Um, and phosphorus is with chard and almonds and lentils and sunflower seeds and cashews. Um, potassium, again, with chard, romaine lettuce, cremony mushrooms, um, spinach, celery, mustard greens, fennel, broccoli again, winter squash, cucumbers, and collard greens. Magnesium, you get, again, all those leafy greens, spinach, pumpkin seeds, almonds, lima beans, Swiss chard, shows up again, bananas, and plantains. And boron, you can get it from almonds, dried apricots, avocados, raisins, dates, grapes, peaches, oranges, pears, bananas, broccoli, broccoli is king, carrots and celery and onions, and finally vitamin K. Again, all those leafy greens, they are amazing. Um, spinach, mustard greens, collard greens, Swiss chard again, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and turnip um, greens. So these are select nutrients from the previous slide, just again, just to show you how easily nutrients can be obtained from whole, preferably organic plant-based sources. Now, as you can see, many plants, especially those leafy greens, have many of the nutrients highlighted throughout. So if you eat enough of your leafy greens, you're going to cover the whole spectrum of, for, for the most part of nutrients that you need. And the world's healthiest food site, it's kind of janky now. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But if you ever, if you get catch it when it's working, um, it has food sources for all nutrients and it includes also plant-based uh, resources. We are plant slanting here, but we recognize that some people are still enjoying uh, meat and um, may um, still want to uh, have that as part of their meals while they're um, doing a step down method. Just make sure that your protein source is clean. And we'll provide a link to the World's Healthiest Food site at the end of this presentation. Okay, we're getting close. Herbs for bone health. Uh, I'm not an herbalist, but I do enjoy um, these herbs nettles, horsetail, alfalfa, oat straw, red raspberry peppermint, red clover, and comfrey. Now, these herbs, if they're taken on a regular basis, you know, you can't just take one day and then not take it um, and take a sufficient um, amount of it, has been shown to increase bone density. Now, the most popular way to absorb these minerals is through a tea, although some people use tinctures and things of that nature. Uh, with herbs, and maybe Karen will talk more about this, you want to start slow and, yo, slow and low um, to make sure that there are no adverse effects. And you also may wish to consult with an herbalist. I think Karen has an herbal tea recipe for us. So that's going to be exciting. Assessing your bone health. So there are three ways, probably more, but these are the top three. Um, your posture and alignment. So as you can see from the, the, the graphic there, um, weak bones can cause the spine to collapse and you kind of round over a little bit. And if you ever seen uh, women that have the big hump, the widow's hump, um, that happens because of weak bones causing the spine to collapse. And then you can do something called a DEXA scan. Uh, many of you may not be aware that some of you are, it measures density of your bones or how brittle they are. Now, according to the National Institute of Health, all um, all women, all women over 65 should have a bone density test. And women who are younger than age 65 or at high risk for fractures um, should also have a bone density test. 
And then there are labs. There's panels such as the thyroid stimulating hormones, T3, T4, vitamin D, super important, and others uh, will provide important information about your risk of developing osteoporosis. Now, these panels and more are in your bone health assessment um, guide that you'll have access to at the end of this presentation. Lots of information. You guys are doing great. Now let's talk about the top plant-based bone strengthening foods. Prunes, not a big fan. Um, green leafy vegetables, seeds, especially chia, pumpkin, and sesame, nuts like almonds and Brazil nuts, um, sea veggies, especially kelp and avocados and cruciferous veggies, sprouts, especially broccoli, figs, and black beans. And that's a nice bowl of black bean soup with some um, avocado in there. I think Chef Karen O will be demonstrating how to make a bone building entree. It won't be a soup, <laughs> but it'll still be tasty. A tasty treat and herb tea and recipes will be provided but mostly you're gonna to get to learn from an expert about how to do that. So we're coming to the end of my portion of it so we can bring her on. Just wanna remind you that, um, that uh, you're gonna receive a food as medicine, nutrition, um, food demo immediately following here, so don't leave. Um, and that's free. Um, a bone health assessment guide, free, just for showing up and staying until the end. Great, greatly appreciate you. Our BBS YouTube channel, full of information, not just this food is, Me uh, food is medicine webinar, but many, many others from digestion to how to balance your pH um, are in there. Uh, vegan journal, again, you can get a free 12 month subscription. Uh, and if you complete the survey, only if you complete the survey, then I'm going to give you a link to buy tomorrow by 5 p.m. And then finally, you have access to our going vegan 28 day go vegan recipe guide for anybody who is interested um, in either um, being more healthy on their vegan diet or um, adding more vegan options to their diets as they as you try to transition. So in just 28 days, are you going to change how you feel, eat, and live? Um, the transition, it's going to be a good transition to a healthy meat-free diet with the help of Dr. Ruby Lathan and myself. We created that. And you also receive instant access to numerous resources, over 70 delicious recipes, suggested menu plans, shopping lists, plant-based protein sources, 40 snacks on the go, and so much more, plus our expert help. So if, if you're interested in that, um, that'll be in the resource guide, the link to it. Okay, we've got about three minutes left. All right, and finally, um, everyone who registered, Everyone who registered will be eligible to participate in a raffle drawing to win and receive immediately, immediate download access to a healthy vegetarian recipe starter guide with breakfast, lunch, and dinner and juice um, recipes. You will be notified via email through me, um, probably within seven days, but we'll also be posting it who won in our blog. Um, so if you don't want to be named when I tell you that you won, I can use your initials. Let's see, um, save the date. We've got another one next month. Food is medicine. Get your digestive tract back on track. Saturday, August 27th, 2022, 2 to 315. Okay. So I'm going to introduce the person who's going to be taking over in about two minutes. <laughs> and then I'll answer questions if we can before she starts, if there are not a whole lot of them. Um, so Chef Karen O, oh, as we lovingly call her, she's a great friend and a colleague. Uh, she's a gourmet chef, an instructor, and a registered yoga teacher. Um, she specializes in considering um, individual health conditions and taking the best from many different theories to determine what will deliciously bring vibrant health to the individual. Now, some of the modalities she studied include raw, um, vegan, Ayurvedic, macrobiotic, um, low-fat, high-carb, high-fat, low-carb, low-glycemic, and um, her favorite, whole food, plant-based, no oil. Karen also teaches gentle yoga classes that are safe for bones and joints that stimulate bone formation. She also teaches yoga for um, overcoming anxiety for stress. All right, that's a lot. Okay, I'm gonna stop the share now. And hopefully you guys will see my face shortly. Okay, my computer is still acting goofy. Not sure why. Okay. 
I'm going to end the show. All right, there we go. Thank you all for your patience. I'm not sure what's happening here. It's not letting me back over. There we are. Woo! And I'm back. All right. And now I will start answering some questions for you guys. And then we'll turn it over to Karen. Let's see what's in the chat. Let's see. Okay, Francisca says she's calling, coming from San Diego. Welcome. How can we view the recording after? Um, yeah, the recording will be available within um, seven days. It'll be in our Black Veg Society YouTube channel. And I'm going to post at the chat before we move on to Karen, a document that has all the, the links that I talked about. So you can um, have access to that. Um, you cannot get in from email link sent to her. Okay. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Which cooking oil should be used? We'll talk to Karen about that. Karen, that's a question for you. Which cooking oil should be used? Um, how much is considered high? What is considered too much salt or sugar? I did give some information in there about um, too much, and uh, Karen will probably share some of that with you. Uh, what about soy milk? Um, soy is problematic, can be for some people because it's GMO and it could cause issues. Um, and again, I'll, I'll leave that to Karen. Karen, I hope you're taking note. <laughs> um, what are refined grains? Is that grocery store bread? Yep, pasta, you got it. Um, can you please speak about scoliosis? Um, okay, so I can't really speak about scoliosis because I don't really know you as a client and I want to keep you safe. Um, so you feel free to um, contact me through email. We can have a more informed conversation about it. Um, I, I understand you're getting help for it in the whole food vegan um, normal BNI. Okay, good. Let's talk offline so I can keep you safe. Um, myofacial release from an educated PT can be a huge help. Yes, Patricia, absolutely. All right. I think that's all the questions for now. So now I'm going to, Karen, I'm going to make you the host. And then when you're ready, you can pin yourself. So right now, Garnetta is showing in the middle. Okay. There she is. Hey, Karen. <laughs> All right. Remind me of the questions if I miss some. Um, the oil, <laughs> the best thing is not to cook with oil like when you heat oil it changes the fats into something that can be harmful even the good fats so um what i teach i'm a, uh, an instructor for the physicians committee for responsible medicine and i teach how to cook without oil how to water saute um you can do anything make it nice and flavorful and um after maybe you know it takes 21 days to make a habit after doing that you don't even want the oil when you have something that you, you know that happens to have oil in it you just feel so uh, like bloated um you just you don't miss it um the other question was about soy right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so if you if you are having soy you want to have organic soy so that it it's not gmo and even then there's kind of question about whether um some gmo seed got blown into or the fields that, that use organic you know so but um also fermented soy is really good for your bones and i do eat natto every day there's fermented soybeans and um there have been studies with that um so like the people in Japan and the prefectures that eat that have the least amount of osteoporosis um, in the world. And 
also uh, the people who eat the most dairy have the most osteoporosis. So dairy, like Tony said, does not do body good. No. Um, and let's see, oh, I was gonna say about the natto, a lot of people don't like it because it's slimy. And it's, it's, it's fermented, fermented soy like miso and um, natto, soy sauce, stuff like that. As long as it's organic, it is pre pretty protective of your bones actually. And natto has all, like there's, Tony was showing you all those um, nutrients that are good for your bones. And I have a chart on my website too. It's myfoodfitnessandfun.com that you can download. I have like all these uh, nutrients and what they do for your bones. And then um, a column of where you can find those nutrients in plant-based foods. But if you look at natto, it has almost all of those. There's like 22 different nutrients that you really need for your bones. And you're actually a, a master at putting it in food where you wouldn't you because you know you know how I feel about natto, but I know how good it is. But you're you have a, a really good way because you're in, in addition to being a food scientist, you're a food artist. And so she can hide it and stuff, and you won't even know you've eaten it. I do want to um ask ask people answer some more questions if you're complete with that thought. Um oh, yeah. so hmm, go ahead. You want me to tell, tell them how I do it? I mean, like, so yeah. I just was determined to eat it because it was yeah. good for me. Yes. So and I, I wouldn't eat it by my, by itself. No. I put it in my salad. And because it's slimy, you don't even need a dressing. I just like sprinkle herbs in there. And, and you don't even, like, if you want, you can put a little vinegar or something, lemon, and just stir it up. And it kind of makes its own dressing. And it's not slimy. Your salad is not slimy. It's good. And I also have made salad dressing with, the natto and it kind of tastes like a cheese in a dressing mm -hmm. and yeah. so yeah there's things you can do but yeah you don't want to eat it by itself yeah so <laughs> no you don't someone asked um and this is always get a question about this is there a daily vitamin supplement for vegetarians well I have a love-hate relationship with um, supplements. I think if you need them to get yourself up to therapeutic, that's fine, but you don't want to rely on supplements because the body was designed to digest food and only food. And so if you're relying on supplements and hence the word supplement, you will still never get everything you need because it's designed to enhance what you eat. So um, my, my, my hope is that you will get your daily supplements um, from leafy greens and all that. If you have trouble digesting, you can always do it in a smoothie or juice. And then finally, if you feel like you are below therapeutic and either from a test, um, there are um, vegan formula uh, supplements out there. And Karen can mention a few of her favorites. I like Garden of Life. Go ahead, Karen. <laughs> oh, um, no, I just keep on. I was just going to say <laughs> supplements. Um, Sometimes, so sometimes you're just going to like uh, pee and poop them out. True. <laughs> if they're not really digestible. Um, you actually need vitamin B6 and vitamin A to make the hydrochloric acid that will let you absorb the nutrients from your food or from the supplements. Um, and then sometimes supplements, you, you don't know how much you're actually getting. You might, like if you take too much of something, you're going to throw something else off balance in your body. So it's really, unless you do need them, like Tony said, for a therapeutic reason, uh, get it from food. And if you eat like the rainbow of foods, you don't even have to know what's in each color, but Ooh. every color of food is a different nutrient and you're going to get everything you need. Agreed. Couldn't have said it better. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, hope that helped. And, and finally, she said about the... Um, you know, be throwing all the other nutrients off. That's why it's best to work with an expert like her and myself to make sure that uh, we can support you in getting those nutrients that you need in a way that your body can actually absorb. Let's see, just Johnson says dairy, no good. What about insure or something like that? Oh my, Karen, I'm gonna let you take that one. <laughs> That's sugar, sugar, it's just sugar. Um, I'd rather have a green juice or something, you know, uh, yeah, it's just sugar. 
it, it is is a chemical basically. It, there's no there's no redeeming qualities in it, uh, none except sugar. And sugar is not redeeming, and it destroys the body. So, um, you know, I would encourage you again to do like Karen said, juices or smoothies if you're looking for something um, convenient. Uh, Alyssa says, can't get past the texture and smell of natto. Well, Karen just told you how. I hope you were listening. <laughs> <laughs> let's see yeah, if it's in a salad it just tastes like beans in a salad that's i agree beans in it, i loved i mean once you you know showed me how to eat it, it it really was less offensive to me um let's see uh patricia yeah, asked, question, sorry about uh, yeah. where to buy it you can you can make it or you can i have a little booklet about how to make it on my website but you can also buy it at a japanese um store market mm -hmm. Let's see. Patricia asks, can you eat natto with a history of breast cancer? I'm assuming. Is it safe? Yeah. Um, I, you know, you'd have to really work with your practitioner, but there have been a lot of studies that soy is protective even for people who have had breast cancer. It's like there's a, a um, I forget the terminology, but there's a receptor or something for um, there are actually two receptors. Tony, do you know about that? There's like two two different receptors, like an A and a B, and the, mm -hmm. actually soy is one kind, and then the estrogen is another. So um, it's not as dangerous as the myth. Well, what we can do, because we are dedicated to making sure that we give you great information, uh, we will research and give you the best for that. So I'm going to um, have a note here, about soy and cancer and why it's safe. And that will also be in the blog. So if you join the Black Veg Society, you will have that information in the blog. Uh, let's see, lots of good questions. Let's see, what is Karen's website? So at the end of this, when Karen gives me back control and I'm the host, I'm going to put a resource document that has everything I promised you, including the recipe, and you'll know how to contact her from the information. I think that's on the recipe guide that you've given us, right? It'll have your... It is, and I also have a, another surprise gift. Oh, okay, stay to the end. <laughs> Let's see, she's full of surprises. Let's see, is it better to eat whole food and not blended like smoothies? Actually, yes. Um, so there's a time and a place for smoothies. Like if you have digestive issues and you're working on fixing them, it's a good way to get nutrients. But if you can eat whole foods, um, when you, when you blend it and you drink it really fast, you're getting all that sugar really fast and you're going to kind of spike your blood sugar. If you have a lot of fruit in there, if you have, you can make savory smoothies with lots of greens and avocado and stuff like that. And it won't, it won't raise your blood sugar as much. Um, but yeah, if you just eat food in its whole form, that's actually the best thing, but everybody's different. Everybody's working on different issues. So you have to do what's best for you. Right. So everything is not black and white. It just, everything is depends, depends, right? Because <laughs> it's by one individual. So you don't want to one size fits all and, and make everything that everybody else do, does work for you because it could work against you. Like Karen said, can you recommend any publications, documentaries for, for information? Well, Walter, what more information would you like information about so we can be a little bit more specific about what you what you need before Karen starts her demo? Be a little bit more specific and we may be able to point you in the right direction okay and karen um do you have enough time if we if we cut off the questions now to get started and you do you want to continue to me to field your questions how do you want to continue um yeah i can go ahead and start and you can ask uh, ask me questions as we go if you want cool um, <laughs> i just wanted to explain one little thing of course i start making food um so i'm i'm boiling water for the the tea that you mentioned um but I just want to explain how that the mechanism works for for your bone health, and actually one one other thing, like um, there's so it's all related. Okay, uh, we're talking about some nutrients that support the bones, but also if you're over men menopause, then like your ovaries don't produce the estrogen anymore, which is protective, but your adrenal glands produce a hormone that actually converts to estrogen and so that is protected it's like hope is not lost right. and one thing another thing is 
like as childbearing age, you need all those, you need denser bones, you need the minerals that are in your bones to support growing a fetus or feeding a newborn, you know, nursing. So when you're older, you don't need those anymore. So it's not so scary that your bones are not the same as a 30 year old. Thank so, you, Karen. Yeah. No, well, the, the, the reality check we probably all needed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just see a number and the doctor scares you into taking the drugs. And the, the first thing that you should do, like if you have some kind of medical issue where you need, like if you're having, if you've had a fracture and you're in danger of having another fracture, you might want to take the drugs while you work on the issue. Mm -hmm. And then, but, but the drugs are really dangerous if you can do it some other way. So we're going to talk about doing it another, supporting your bones in another way, but um, you want to support your thyroid, your adrenals and everything to help your bones. Especially after you, thank you for reminding us that, you know, after menopause, when the ovaries shut down, the adrenals take over and adrenals already have a heavy job of, you know, taking care of stress in the body. So many women don't enjoy menopause and don't support their bone health because they're overly stressed. And the adrenals are thinking that, well, you got to keep running. So uh, yeah, we're going to try to help you get a little bit for the bones, but mostly we're just going to let you run. Um, so it's important, as Karen says, to just take care of all those other supporting players. Thank you for that reminder, Karen. Oh, sure. So, <laughs> and then you know that calcium and phosphorus are the main components of bone. Your bone has like two, an inner layer and an outer layer. And the bone density scans just measure that outer layer. So the inner layer is what we're going to talk about now. Wow. It's the, the spongy uh, inner layer. And that's like, if you've seen pictures of like whole porous bone with like, you know, holes that uh, uh, they illustrate osteoporosis. That, well, that's the inner, inner workings of your bone. So if you can do something to make those um, spaces less, like if you think of a ladder and the rungs between the ladder are, are like large and a heavy person steps on that ladder, it's gonna break. So mm -hmm. if, the, if the rungs are closer together and a heavy person steps on the ladder, it's gonna bear more weight. So we want those, uh, the lattice work in there to be strong, close together. Right. So what I'm talking about is uh, everything I do is for that. So like when you stress your bones, after about eight seconds of stressing your bones, this protein matrix comes out of the bone cells and it like attracts all the minerals from your bloodstream and that hardens that inner layer of your bone. So we want calcium and phosphorus and plant-based calcium is a lot more bioavailable than dairy. Which and we so, talked about earlier. <laughs> like the recommendations, the RDA for calcium is high because it's harder to take in that calcium from the dairy and stuff. So if you're eating plant-based calcium, you don't need quite as much. I think so, even the uh, National Dairy Association, and I can share that um, when I do the blog, has also acknowledged um, that you don't get a significant amount of calcium. I, there's just a society, and I, I will share that again. I don't want to steal your your thunder, but I'll make a note for that. Oh, that's good. Share that, share that study. All right, so uh, I'm going to make a tea that you can sip on every day, all during the day. Um, I have, I'm going to actually, oh, I don't need to lower it yet, but I have oat straw and horsetail. So, and I have alfalfa. Um, I've also got nettles. And so Mountain Rose Herbs is a good place to get these things. And so is Frontier. Um, and they're just, you know, uh, cuttings dry. And if you take, they really, they have calcium and silica. Um, and uh, some of them have like, yeah, then the alfalfa has uh, actually vitamin D, vitamin K, you, um, and, and Tommy talked about vitamin K, um, and we're going to make something with a lot of greens, the kale, cabbage, and collards. Collard greens are the best source of calcium of anything, and kale and all the cruciferous vegetables, all these greens are right behind it, so we're going to use that, but they're a good source of calcium, 
and magnesium and vitamin K got the uh, beta carotene, which converts in your body to vitamin A, which like I said, you need for the hydrochloric acid. So greens are like the best thing you can have. Um, like king and queen. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but, um, but your, your body converts vitamin K1, which is in the greens and these things to vitamin K2. And um, vitamin K2 is what takes the calcium out of your arteries into your bones and your teeth. So natto is why I decided to eat that is because natto is the best form of vitamin K2, the best vegan form. So uh, yeah, you want it, you don't want the calcium in your arteries. No. <laughs> All right. So I, I keep going. Uh, when you get to a good stopping point, let me know and I'll just start doing more questions. Oh, okay. Hopefully right. they'll be related to what you're doing. That that would be best. <laughs> okay. So uh, when I'm, like I said, I've got a first tail. Tony mentioned all those herbs, but what you can do is take half of a cup of any of the herbs and I, and just get a quart. You can do more, but uh, a one quart mason jar. And you can put the herbs, like half a cup in here and just pour boiling water in here and and just let it sit for at least four hours. I usually make it and just let it sit overnight on the counter and then strain it in the morning. You can just run it through a strainer and sip on it all day. But I also have this handy dandy half cup strainer. So I'm going to just take half a cup of, I'm gonna pick two, I'm gonna use horsetail and oat straw. And just put it, so this is a quarter cup measure. I'm gonna put half a quarter cup of each. You can do one herb, half a cup of one herb, or you can do a combination of all of them. So Karen, are there any contraindicators for any of those herbs or? Uh... Um, some of them like the, um, maybe it is the oak straw. Some of them can be a diuretic. Okay. So yeah, so you should just like try it. <laughs> Low and slow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, she said oat, oat straw, O-A-T. She was asking which one, oat or oak, oat, O-A-T. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and this will all be... Um, yeah, you'll get the recipe. And you'll get the recipe and all that. And you'll be able to do the replay of this too if you said, yeah, I want to see it again. <laughs> I'm going to lower this down and I'm just going to pour the... Hot water in. So while you're doing that, someone asked about rhubarbs. Are they healthy and the leaves? Nece you mean necessarily for bone health? I can't. I can't answer that. I'd have to look up and see what yeah. the what the nutrients are in there. Yeah, we'd have to look that up. So, rhubarbs. but you can see, it's already. This is already looking like a tea. It's just going to get darker. You just fill it up, and by the time this is over, it's going to be pretty dark. Yeah, and I, I really appreciate how you mentioned the steeping time because many people treat it like the dust that's in tea bags, right? And um, they drink it immediately, you know, after like ten minutes, and, and you're not getting all that nutrient leached from the leaves if you right. do it that way. Yeah, um, I'm gonna just move it over here, I guess. Okay. Until okay. Well, maybe you could ask, tell people how you became the bone whisperer, <laughs> the bone health expert. <laughs> what well, made you decide to make that your niche? Your niche? Actually, um, somebody I love actually was put on those bone drugs for osteoporosis and um, never taken off. When you when you take the drugs, you're only supposed to take them for like a couple of years. There's some that build, okay, so you have bone cells, right? You have osteoblasts that build bone and osteoclasts that break them down. And you want both. So some of the drugs just stop that breakdown, but that makes you have brittle, worn out bone. Like when you have worn out bone, maybe a little fracture or something, say in your neck, um, a micro fracture, you don't even know it, but it, like makes it, it kind of well fracture and collapse and then move your head farther forward 
And then if, you, if that makes your head heavier, like if your head's on top of your shoulders, it weighs 10 or 12 pounds. Mm -hmm. But if it comes forward, it weighs more and then it weighs more. The, the more microfractures you have that collapse, the farther forward your head is going to get. Mm -hmm. So, um, and your head will be heavier and increasing chance for another fracture. And, and it's not just in your spine, but um, everywhere, if, you're, if you have some kind of little fracture, those osteoclasts will come in and just smooth it out and resorb the minerals that we're giving our, you know, that are in that bone and the protein so that it will, your body can use it again to lay down the osteoblast and then lay down new smooth bone, bone cells. So there was, you know, that's why those those drugs are dangerous because that never happens if you just stop the osteoclast. There's some that force the osteoblast to build, but they're forcing it, your bone to do something unnatural, and it can cause heart problems. It can cause all kinds of all kinds of things. So um, that's even worse than the ones that st stop the the breakdown, but. Um, if you're on those, some of them are one year, some of them are two years. You're, you're not supposed to take them any more than that. And then after you're done with those, all the all the bone you built will just leave really fast if they don't put you on the ones that stop the breakdown for a little while. Wow. So yeah, use those if you're having fractures, but if you can prevent having to go on those, it's much better. Because oh, um, here's but, my, my favorite thing to say, Karen. Um, it's lifestyle that got you in the situation. It's lifestyle that's going to get you out. True. True. <laughs> so, um, so our batteries are excellent information. I also want to keep in mind that um, we might run a little over. Hopefully you guys will be okay with that. But you want to you want to see this whole thing. And I we could sit oh, and just chat with her for all day because she's such a, she has so much great information. Again, the bone, it's not just... Um, nutrition but she's also you know a how to help you build bone through movement a yoga specialist so i really rely on her very heavily for this information i'm so glad she's here anyway i'm done <laughs> yeah, i'll kind of talk about that in a second i'm just gonna have make, so we're gonna make some cookies and um, make them really fast. and i already made a little i made some like i made half the recipe so i'm gonna make the other half now but i made them so i could show you without having to wait for them to bake but what we're gonna do is take a little bit of um, these are sprouted rolled oats. You can use any rolled oats, but if you're using oats, I would recommend organic because if they're not organic, they're dried with glyphosate and that can produce like digestive issues. And then you want to absorb all the nice nutrients that we are wanting, that we're putting into our body to help support the bones. Mm -hmm. So I just put, I'm going to lower this screen so you can See what I'm doing. Okay. Put the oats in a bowl. There's my dog to see if I drop anything. <laughs> and then the co host. <laughs> yes. So, Walter, I think you had asked a question about um, memory and um, brain health. Uh, we did a uh, few of food as medicine webinar on that so if you can go to our playlist and look for it um good mood eating for good mood and all that you'll see more information there but if you need more than that send me an email and i'll see what i can scrounge up for you okay keep going karen yeah i ate at buckwheat groats which are also good for your bones they have other nutrients like they have zinc which is necessary for um your bones uh, zinc selenium and calcium and I'm going to just um, make a little flour. So we've got the whole oat groats. I mean, not oat groats, sorry. We have the dried oat, uh, rolled oats. And then I'm going to just make a flour out of the buckwheat groats. All right. So, someone okay. asked, Valerie asked, is that a cookbook in the background? I can't see it clearly. Um, yeah, that back in the back, I guess the color chart for the food. That is a, um, actually I can give you that. 
we a PDF of that. It's just it's like the nutrition rainbow. It tells like all the colors of the vegetables and fruits and what you know what foods contain uh, the well what With the phytonutrients and phytonutrients in yeah. every color. Of, yeah, yeah, in every color. Uh, let's see. Kay says a doggy sous chef. <laughs> That's she funny. likes all kinds of vegan food. She's been trained. I have a fig tree in my backyard, and she runs out in the morning to get the figs that have fallen before I can get them. Oh, <laughs> figs are good for bone health. What what types of figs do you have? What types of figs? I think mm -hmm. they're turkey figs. Oh, so they're kind of brownish. Well, I think they're greenish, brown and green and purple. Oh, I don't know what kind they are. They're not. Well, I've had those in Texas and oh my gosh, delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to run and fight her for them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have um, the oats and the buckwheat groats. Then I'm going to put a little bit of baking soda in here. We're just going to mix all the dry ingredients. And again, I'm only making half of the recipe. Remember that. Remember at the end of this, when she gives me back control, I'm going to put a resource document that has everything we talked about that we were going to share with you, at least on my end. And then um, if, if she may be able to post a document too or other things that she's going to give away. I think you have to, well, it, you can type it in. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll tell you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got this. Uh, okay, so then I'm going to put a little bit of salt, just a little bit. So this has tahini in it, which is really a good form of, I mean, it has, it gives you some calcium for your bones, but it also gives you phosphorus and magnesium and iron. So the magnesium actually helps you absorb the calcium. So Let's talk about salt a little bit because we mentioned earlier that if you have too much salt. Right. I just put a tiny bit. It's really good with tahini. You could. Yeah, it is. Is there a but, maximum that we um, that you can recall? And that yeah, don't, if you know. don't have high blood pressure, you want like twenty three hundred milligrams. Grams, yeah. If you have high blood pressure, you want probably just like fifteen. But what I, I mean, fifteen hundred. But what I tell people to do is take a little bowl like this, and um, put about a half a teaspoon of salt in in it, and don't cook with salt. Uh, but after you've cooked your food, if you want to sprinkle a little bit of salt from the bowl onto your food, that's good because when you cook with it, it tends to dissipate. And then when you start to eat, you want to put more salt on it. That makes sense. So if you wait until you're eating, put the salt on there. But I did that just to see how much salt I was getting. And um, I think half a teaspoon is probably around 1500 sounds about right uh, or, or you, I don't know but um but you know what I only used a quarter teaspoon and I wasn't trying not to use salt I was just putting it on how I like it and so if you do that for a couple days you know you're not getting more than 1500 and you you know you don't have to worry about it oh, and, and the, salt, the salt huh. that you use is um like I use Himalayan pink salt or sea salt so I don't like the bleach stuff uh, for, for my iodine, you do need iodine for your thyroid, your adrenals, and for your bones. Uh, but I take a little bit of kelp powder or some kind of sea vegetables every day. Because I don't want to the, the more information you thought you were going to get about salt, I hope you feel very um, um, enlightened now. Um, let's talk about Kay says, uh, I think, I hope I pronounced your name properly, Kay or Quay. Saw, she said she saw somewhere that we should not use metal bowls. Does it matter when you're preparing food? We're not heating anything in the bowls. Um, I'm just going to stir this up and put it on a parchment paper lined cookie sheet. So the same thing with like plastic. I, I wouldn't uh, heat anything. Well, it depends on what kind of metal too. True. <laughs> Stainless steel Yeah. is yeah. better than aluminum. Mm -hmm. Right. Aluminum leeches, stainless steel, not so much. I hope that helped. <laughs> Good questions, you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, now I just put in the dry ingredients. I'm just going to put in the, the wet ingredients. So you don't need a food processor. You don't need anything to make this acceptable. Well, you can have a blender or you can buy buckwheat flour, but I like the groats to pressure. 
Um, okay, so I need tahini, and then I'm going to use yacon syrup. This is a root, like a kind of like a sweet potato, more liquidy, um, and it's actually a prebiotic, so it feeds the good uh, gut bacteria. Mm -hmm. uh, gets in, gets digested, um, goes through your upper digestive system without being broken down, and then it gets to the lower, and feeds the the good bacteria. Um, so it like helps your gut health. And then um, if you can't find that or uh, don't have it, you can use date syrup, which you can buy in the store or you can make by just blending dates in water. So it's just a syrup and vanilla and some tahini. Uh, let's see. You know, my thing, five ingredients or less, I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> How much tahini? Half cup. So what I'm gonna do quarter cup. And so tahini usually shows up a little more um, tightly packed than that. How did you get it? That yes, way? it does. And usually I don't buy this kind. Does somebody give me this? Um, I I really like the. This tastes good. Mm -hmm. but I really like the artisana. Oh yeah. Yeah, so this one, so the one I normally use is raw. So this one is not raw, which is why it's like this. Um, but we're cooking it anyway, so that's why I'm using it in this recipe to kind of use it. Let's so, see. So John says, date sir, question mark. How many dates, how much water, anything else? Blend for how long? Looks like he wants a recipe. Wants a recipe. Yeah, you can. Um, you can probably to make your blender work. You'll need about a cup of dates and then half a cup of water. Or if you want it more thinner, you can put more water in it. But okay. start with half a cup, um, and then add like blend it and see if it's too thick for you, and then add some more. If you want it as um, thin as this, you actually will need more. You might do half, like ratio of one to one. Mm -hmm. um, and then just keep it in your refrigerator for a week or so. You can use it for any kind of sweetener. So the dates have minerals and fiber, and that helps your body use the sugar that's in the dates instead of just adding some kind of sugar. Right. Like chemical. That, those are natural. The body knows what to do with it. It's, you know, it's, it's um, chemically balanced. It knows how to process versus processed sugar, which is a poison. Yeah. And so all it knows how to do is damage. Once it gets past the taste buds of tasting good, then yeah, it's just scary. I just put, um, a bit, put some vanilla in there and I'm just gonna mix it up. I so wish I was in Texas right now. <laughs> well, I made the, you know, made half the recipe last night and I, I had to eat three. I couldn't just leave them for today. Oh, I tell you, next time we do this, I'm gonna be in the kitchen with you. I just can't stand it because I've had her food. She, when I say she's a food scientist and an artist, everything is always balanced with pH. She wants to make sure that you're it's um, more alkaline or slightly acidic, um, and and then she balances the taste so nothing overpowers anything. It's just she's just amazing. Want to be alkaline? You want um, so like it, like Tony was saying, if your uh, your your blood is going to keep that seven point three four to seven point four five that tight range, mm -hmm. and your bones are made of minerals. So where's it going to get the minerals to keep that? It's going to steal it from your bones and just cause weak bones. All right, so we've kind of made a batter with that. We're going to take a few dates. And, and that's for like texture. The dates, mm -hmm. they're like sweetener. Uh, I mean, it's texture and sweet. Mm -hmm. We need to put a whole lot of sweetener in there. Okay. Um, it's like kind of like oatmeal raisin cookies, but it's a different, um, different flavor profile. So we're just gonna I love dates. Shelf them up. Yep. And. Right. Well, they can be a little sticky. Do you soak yours before you use them for like prep or do you just take them? Cause sometimes they, they can be a little um, tough. 
this I would not, I would not soak them because you want this dry texture. If you're going to make a, like a date syrup without a high powered high speed blender, mm -hmm. you might want to soak them to get them softer. These yeah. are really soft. You know what? Costco has the best. They have like a two pound box, the best price of organic dates anywhere. Wow. So Thanks for the tip. <laughs> it used to be like sometimes $8.99 or $10.99. Now they're $11.99. Wow. But everything is, but still that's for two pounds. Yeah. So Kay asks, if we like thing, if we like things sweet, is there a good alternative to white sugar like honey, agave? Well, some of the things she showed us already was the Yacon syrup, um, lucuma. Karen, I'll let you handle that. Yeah, uh, lucuma is not too sweet, but like date, I love date syrup or make, you know, making your own date syrup. Um, and if you want, like if you're baking and you need a dry sugar, there's date, uh, date sugar, which is just dried and ground. Oh, now I did not know that. Thank you for that tip. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, what I'm, I'm just gonna. Um, I I know I have a feeling about honey and agave, but I'll let you give um your thoughts about them. Uh, okay. Agave, you <laughs> agave. You never know if it's cut with corn syrup, and also the effect of agave is on the liver is kind of like corn syrup. Um, straight to the brain and gives you brain fog. Yeah, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't. Yeah. So I'm just well, gonna, I like how you use that little scooper to get your yeah, even sizes. You can make them any size you want. I'm just gonna oops. I'm too much of a hurry here. Right, okay. and I'm gonna, we'll uh, stay. We'll we're gonna I'm gonna hang on as long as you're here. And if people need to leave, they can leave. But um I'm just gonna until you're done. Well, I'm just gonna go on to the next recipe because I'm gonna show you the cookies, but I would press it into the scoop and then do this and then take a fork and then you don't have to you can you can have whatever shape you want and you can use a bigger scoop you can make and they uh, don't have to be pretty they don't no. <laughs> they don't have to be like you put them in a box and bought them and you put them in the oven for like 12 minutes at 350. i'm gonna just not do that right now i'm gonna go on to the next recipe but i'll show you what i made last night <laughs> This was the other half of the oh, rest. They are pretty. And they're nice and thick. Yeah, yeah, and you can, you can thin them out. You can make them however you want. But that looks great. They're a little bit salty and pretty sweet with the dates. Um, and the tahini is just really a good snack, or it could be a breakfast. It could be dessert. I love how you talk about food that way, too, because we put, we put labels on breakfast food and all that. Um, let's see, Pernell says, can figs be used? Yeah, it would just give it a different flavor. Yeah, and a different texture as well with the fig, you know, seeds. Um, let's see, Johnson says, I can't see the dates in them. Laugh out loud. <laughs> uh, but, they're but, there. <laughs> they're there, I see them. It's like a, you have an oatmeal raisin cookie. You have that bite of chewy sweetness. All right, okay. now <laughs> I'm gonna go to the next recipe. Go for it. I'm Last just asking questions. So this is kale, cabbage, and collards. And so it's all those nutritious greens. So what I've done, I'm gonna do, I did a one bunch of kale and I'm gonna do a bunch of um, collard greens. I don't want you to have to wait for the whole thing. But, yeah. Take your time. Okay. Those are some big healthy leaves, Karen. Did they come from your garden? No, mine died. Oh no. But it's like in the hundreds every day and they won't oh. grow. So what I did with the kale and I'm doing with these, you just you can take a knife and just cut along the um, stem, or you can just like get your kids to, and these have been sitting out, so they're a little floppy. Just pull the leaf off and keep keep the stems because there's a lot of nutrients in those stems and you can cut them up and like slice them and put them in with your beans when you're cooking beans that's one thing I like to do or you can juice them to get all those nutrients but I'm just going to great tip them up and stack them up and chiffonade 
I'm getting so much calcium in all of these. Yeah, that that was a surprise to me when I learned, you know, how much calcium um, college had. Like 300 milligrams per cup. Something of crazy food. like that. Yes. And so um, does any any get lost through heat? Do you know? Yeah. Well, OK, they have some of the nutrients do get lost, like vitamin C is damaged by heat. We're not going to heat this. Uh, so we are, we're going to massage it with um, lemon juice and some salt. And mm. that's going to break down the cell wall just like cooking it does. But we're not using any heat. So I stack the leaves. I'm just going to kind of roll them up. I guess it goes on. My knife has dates on it. It's going to be an interesting flavor. <laughs> Um, John, John says, I have never seen such big leaves in Toronto, I bet. <laughs> yeah, those are huge. I, I've not seen them. But although this season, they have been coming a little larger. I'm not sure why. Uh-oh, your sous chef is... He wants some. <laughs> well, when I cut anything like cucumbers, carrots. Um... What a healthy dog. <laughs> uh, Valerie says she can't find organic collards in my town, your town. Valerie, you might want to start to grow your own. Are you in a place where you can um, grow? Feel free to unmute if you like. I so have a very, very small lot line and, and the HOA will not let you grow stuff like that unless I, I sneaked around and did it like it was a flower or something. Huh. I wonder if you have like... Um, uh, CSA community, or um, I'm trying to think some ideas for you. The farmers market, Karen. What do you think? Any other ideas? Yeah, farmers market. I've actually grown one plant in a pot, a, a collard. Oh. You just get a big pot, and it'll grow. Nice. Um, okay. Great idea. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Ask what's the best way to wash those greens. Well, I just put them in a bowl of, like, actually, I just bowl of water and just um, swish it around. And then um, I did rinse them afterwards because they had some bugs. That was good for, because they were organic. I don't mind the bugs. I'd rather have bugs than pesticides. Yes. And um, I don't know how you feel. I feel when they're organic, um, you get a little bit of that B12. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you don't want to get water is fine, right? You don't want to put anything harsh on it to wash away all that. Right. Yeah. Hope that okay. helped. Then I just cut some some cabbage, some green cabbage, and I'm gonna you can do it, you can slice it thin with a knife. I'm just gonna run it through the food processor really quick. Okay. Take your time, Karen. So um we are at 317. I think we're gonna probably be here to 330-ish if you guys are okay. And this has helped me too, because we're probably going to do more with her because I love her. And um, so now I know to advertise for an hour and a half for all your, your wonderful information. I'm just going to see if I have four cups here. Okay, take your time. But yeah, I'm almost done. This is like the last time. Your information was just invaluable. I mean, you help people every day with this and you experiment. And that's why I call, the, I call her a food scientist. And she really is about balancing the taste, balancing the nutrition. So she wants it to taste good, but most important, wants it to be nutritionally balanced. We need just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Take your time. And it's amazing, as she said earlier, when you put the little sea salt and, and lemon, it breaks down that tough cellulose. Um, so you don't really have to heat it. It almost resembles um, the texture of, of steamed or cooked. Um, yeah, so if you have trouble digesting raw greens, this probably won't give you trouble. Shouldn't. But I do have a trick for that. I think maybe you taught me that a little bit is um, to eat um, something some, with enzymes, like maybe fermented cabbage or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, that reminds me of something else with the cruciferous vegetables. But I just need a tiny bit more. But um, the, the cruciferous vegetables have um, an enzyme and a precursor, and when they combine, you get um, sulforaphane, which is a really cancer protective. Um, it's it's just like really good for you, and that 
is not damaged by heat if you're ever cooking the greens, but the, the enzyme is damaged by heat. So if you can cut your greens like 40 minutes before your um, before you cook and, and just let them sit, then that sulforaphane is made. It's like that happens when you chew the raw stuff together or try to just damage it. The enzyme and the precursor combine and then uh, make that sulforaphane. So we're just going to put the cabbage in here. So pretty. Yeah, yummy. That green's my favorite color. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're going to do, get this out of the way mm -hmm. really quick, is take an avocado. Yes, because you're oil free. And I know the temptation might be to, you know, throw a bunch of oil on there, but avocado adds rich smoothness and you get the, that wonderful bone health from the avocados, right? Yeah, and it has B6 um, for all these things like your thyroid, your adrenals, your digestion, you know. Can't, all um, those things that have to be like the, the, the players, the bit players that also have to, um, oh, Johnson said, that's a lot for a whole week. Well, if Karen and I were in the house together and we had been, <laughs> that won't last a week. But I'll show you, it really goes down. Just what <laughs> it'll I'm gonna massage it and it's not gonna not yes. gonna be much. Yeah, once you break down the cellulose, it'll come down almost half. Yeah. It, it starts to weep, as they call it, like the water, it'll you know, leach the water from it. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I would say with me and Karen, we might get two meals out of that. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Salt that I, I had. Where's my salt? All right. So we're just going to put a little bit of salt. Anybody have any other questions for Karen, either about what she's doing or? So Karen, how long have you been? A food scientist. <laughs> oh man, uh, almost thirty years, maybe more than that. So when I first started out um, getting healthy, my family healthy, I would make my kids these beautiful birthday cakes with like edible flowers and stuff, but they tasted horrible. <laughs> so um, I went to culinary school. <laughs> So, so it could be delicious and somebody will want to eat it, right? <laughs> I understand. So I got the avocado in there and some salt and I'm just going to put some lemon juice in. And I'm going to save back a little bit of the lemon juice because you don't have to do this. Um, sometimes once all that water comes out of the greens, you, can, you will uh, just pour it out. So it can be a little bit bitter. And then I'll put a little more lemon juice in. Maria says, I see two servings. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and Johnson says, no olive oil. Yes. Yeah, so I'll let Karen explain why um, we tend to not gravitate towards um, fractured foods. Go ahead, Karen. Uh, well, oil is just a total fat. There's no vitamins, no, no nutrient value in it. And it's like a hundred, what is it? A hundred and 29 calories a teaspoon yes, or a tablespoon, tablespoon or something. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, it's just wasted. And the other thing about oil is like it clogs your um, insulin receptors and then um, you can't get the sugar out of your bloodstream into your cells. So uh -huh. with the avocado, you're getting all kinds of nutrients, good nutrients. Yes. So the fat but it's you know your body uses it all not to mention thank you karen for that not to mention that with oils they get when they're when you fracture it separate you know the oil from the plant um oxidation oxidize it starts to oxidize so you now you're getting toxins right you're getting something that your body can't use and then now it's trying to struggle with you know how to how to get it out of your body so it's, it's wasted calories basically yep um johnson says I guess from that question, I know better. Thanks a million. Yeah, if you know better, you do better. And that's why I love these food as medicine webinars that we do. 
Um, right, so like it's we'll going put, down. <laughs> and there's not a lot of water to pour out. So I'm gonna put the rest of the lemon juice in here. And then what I did uh, in advance, I sliced a red onion really thin. Red onion's good, a good vitamin C food. It's got quercetin, it's good for your inflammation and your immune system. And it also provides a nice color contrast with this, um, all this green. So I soaked it in lemon juice. You can do it for a couple hours. I, I did it overnight. Um, and then that just breaks it down a little bit and it's it like makes it more palatable. You don't have such a bite. I'm gonna pour out the lemon juice. And just stir it in. And that's it. So um, I think a question was asked, are there some greens that you cannot eat raw? Some greens? Yeah, are there some greens that cannot be eaten raw? Um, I don't think so. It depends on your digestion and like what's going on in your body. Yep. Depend. Right. We said that earlier, remember? <laughs> it just depends. But isn't that pretty? Very pretty. So thanks for watching me make my dinner. Right. <laughs> I'm eating my heart out here. I'm just going to rinse my hand. Okay. And let's see, they've changed this. Oh yeah, what I wanted to tell you guys is Tuesday night, I'm going to do a, um, shall I make you co-host again? I uh, mean, you make, are co-host. Can you make me host? For some reason, it's not letting me. All right. Um, but Tuesday night, I'm going to do, so I also, I teach that yoga for bone health. Like I was saying, like you stress your bones and the protein matrix comes out and, and like attracts all the minerals. So I'm going to teach a special class, a one-time class. Don't want to miss it. Um, and, uh, and if you guys go to myfoodfitnessandfun.com. Okay, I'm going to type uh, that in, um, my food, and then you make me the host and I will go ahead. So my food fitness and fun and it's spelled out and and fun okay. my food fitness and fun also um that'll be on the information that we send my food fitness and fun.com i guess i should have a www um so you have to sign up to get the zoom link but it is if you put in the code veg veg it will be free code so veg yeah code is veg Okay. There's other things besides just the nutrients and the stress in your bones. So the yoga helps in a lot of different ways for your bone health and for preventing fracture. So I'd like to show everybody that if you can make it. Yep, that'd be great. So I am going to, <laughs> it won't let me into my own account. Okay. We're going to see what I can do for you. Uh, um, I'm going to probably do it from Google um, because it won't let me send a share a link from my, um, from my, it used to do that. It used to allow you to share the link from your own account. Let's see here. It's like, go, go to myfoodfitnessandfun.com and scroll down to where I have what classes I'm doing. And the first one on that list is the yoga class for Tuesday night. Okay. All righty. So. I am trying hard to figure out why it will not let me in to put a, a link something from my own account. They've changed it. Should I stop? I mean, I'm gonna see if I can, I don't know if I can, oh yeah, I can remove my spotlight. Okay. And Oops, maybe host. You were there for a second. Yeah, I already made you host. Are you still? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. usually I'll let you go to your account if you want to share something. It says Google Drive. Maybe I can try. There was an update that happened just before I came here. I should not have allowed it. <laughs> okay. um, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, 
I'm let you all keep talking. I'm going to go to my Google account and get the actual, uh, I'm going to, if you give me a few minutes, y'all, I'm going to take the information, put it into my Google account, and then give you the link. It's a long way to do it, but that's the only way you're going to get it. And I want you all to get that information. So Karen, is there anything else you want them to know while I am trying to override the system? <laughs> uh, just have fun with your food. Use fresh whole plant foods, even if you're eating meat. Add a lot of plants in. It'll increase your bone health and increase your overall health. Yes, yes. Um, anybody have any questions they want to ask her about um, about osteoporosis? Uh, maybe you can share with them about your own story about how you broke some bones. Yeah. <laughs> Not so on purpose. It, it didn't really, it didn't have anything to do with osteoporosis, but some dogs, a couple of big, huge pony sized dogs were playing like mouth to mouth at a dog park, off leash park, mm -hmm. and they were running like all over the park and they ran right into the back of my leg and knocked it out from under me. I fell on my back. So I mean, if it was like osteoporosis, I would have broken my back. But it, the impact of those dogs broke the tibial plateau, which is the major weight bearing part of your uh, body and the fibula. And I used all the stuff that I've learned. I studied with Lauren Fishman. He's a um, an MD and he's used yoga to um to actually treat osteoporosis and and i did that before i broke my bone but i used everything i knew to keep myself strong and then to rehabilitate that bone that was the bones that were broken okay everybody i tried i overrode the system and i ended up putting the resources document that has everything in it to a google account a Google document. I hope that you can get in it because I made it available to everyone. It's going to have Karen's recipe. It's going to have the link to the survey. It's going to have some information um, about Black Veg and how to get into the library if you want more information. So if somebody could, if some um, wonderful person could click on that, I should never have clicked, allowed that update. <laughs> But let's see if this works. So someone asked, uh, will you be sending out the cookie reg reg recipe? Yep, it's in that document. Um, let's see, can't copy the link in the chat. Can't I copy can it, click on it. The link and it, it opens in another page, which is good. I mean- Yeah, I, it opened up for me. So you just click on it and it should you should get that document. We'll stay on until everybody has access to it or let me know if there's a problem. Oh, it says somebody had TPF and it changed. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that was like five, almost five years ago and it, like every day. Wow. Change person. Okay, could you, could you just click on the link because it's already hyper? Um, okay, so my, I was, you were able to access the PDF Yay! <laughs> Let's see. All right. Okay. So everybody who wants to get it should be able to get it. Great. Um, have you heard of zero balance? No, I don't think so. Nope. I have not either. So where is it? I'm going to put the link again um, for those of you who missed it. Thank you for your understanding. You all are a great bunch of people. Technology, when it works, it's amazing. When it doesn't, we just have to take a breath. Be patient and outsmart it. <laughs> There's always a workaround. We just have to be patient with that. Anybody, so everybody wants to get it. We're gonna hang on maybe a couple more minutes. Okay, you say, oh, I see it, great. If you click on that link, you should see that document. Just a couple of reminders. Number one, um, if you want that uh, subscription, Please complete the survey. We really, I can speak for myself, and I think we're caring too. We love what we do. We always want to give our best. And so we're looking for feedback, not just negative, but positive. What can we do better? Uh, we invite you to be kind, though. We, we, we appreciate all uh, feedback. Just be kind with your words. Um, and I guess that I'm going to open it up again and make sure there's nothing else I'm forgetting to tell you. Karen's recipes. Oh, I got a, a, a thing. Oh, you said a giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> No, sorry. I mean, that, that giveaway was the yoga class. Oh, but I forgot to put in the spices. I had garlic granules and um, Ooh, yum. 
onion powder. So I like I use it. So there's already onions in here, but the onion powder is just going to bump it up a little bit. The garlic granules instead of fresh garlic is like more like a cook flavor. So it's not such a strong bite, but you could use. Uh, oh, um, natto dressing. Um, Diane says, I'm interested in not natto. I think it's natto. Interested in natto dressing. Yeah. Um, so I all can... things that you would use in an Italian dressing, um, you can just put in a blender and instead of putting oil, put the natto in there. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> I hit my easy button. Um, let's see. Everyone says, thank you. Got it. Great information. Um, thank you for all the information and links. Took me a while to get it, but everything I saw was excellent. Worth the wait. Yay. <laughs> and thank you all again for being patient and hanging in there to the very, very end. Um, I, I want to let Karen um, have any final thoughts or give you guys an opportunity to ask her one question um, or a few questions before we finally sign off. We went a little over. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for your patience. <laughs> yeah. So if you love Karen, let me know in the survey and I'll see if we can like convince her to join us on other food and medicine where we we will be a team where you know I'll talk about a subject and she'll she'll make food. Um yep, yeah, we can do that probably for everyone and we'll make sure that we're probably going to be together for an hour and a half so y'all just plan for that. Um someone asked um the next step for wet mixture yeah. I can't access the survey. Ew, Valerie, you can't? No, I I clicked on uh, the 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 link and then I, I see the document. Um, but when I click on the, the link in the document, then it, it doesn't open. So ah uh, let don't me know go what to do. see. Okay, it opens up on my end. I'm going to click, I'm going to just put it in the, I'm going to put it in the chat directly. How about that? And then we'll see if that will work. You guys are just the greatest. Oh my goodness. You're not letting technology like bring us <laughs> down. We're just, we're just going, we're going to make it work. But that's what we do. It, uh, so Tara yeah. said it opens for her. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to show, um, this is not done, but it, see, it's getting darker. Oh Yeah. And that's what you want. I do, I do nettles because the nettles is a toner and I don't drink it until it's like dark green, like, like forest green. <laughs> um, Cornell said he was able to open it. Valerie, I hope that you are able to open it now. Uh, I can open the survey, but I can't open the other things in the document, like the, re the recipes and all that stuff, um, unfortunately. I wonder why. So I'll just go ahead and, and, and post them separately because I you've been here to the end. You're not going home empty handed. Everybody else, if you all have to leave, drop off. I just want to take care of Miss Valerie. And, well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Of course. Of course. That's what that's what we do. That's why, you know, we're here. And if you're not getting what you need, then um, I have not done my job. OK, so. So, so you you'll have it up for a few minutes. Or yeah, should I'm, I? Gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna put that. Or Valerie, if you feel comfortable, why don't you do this? Send me your email through a private chat. Oh sure. And then I, I will send this to you. It might be easier that way. How about that? Okay. And and uh, when you say oh oh I know what you mean just mm -hmm. to you okay yeah, gotcha because mm -hmm. you might end up making <laughs> some friends. <laughs> and that's oh, okay. I, I'm, happy, I'm happy to make friends. <laughs> okay. I, I, I would like to do that also because I'm on a, a phone now and I'm not sure if I got it on my computer. So I'm going to send you my email as well. Cool. Okay. This is Garnetta. Garnetta. Okay. I think I am going to. Okay. As soon as I get the next one, I'm going to make a screenshot because. Shift command four because this I don't trust this uh, update they did. I'm supposed to um, be able to get that. And let's see, Garnetta, your hands up. So I'm going to put your hand down because you're good to go now. Uh, no, I, that was an accident. I was trying to find uh, your to send you my um, email address. Nope, you're good. Okay, worst case scenario, anything happens, you didn't get the information. You tried to download it. Life happened. Go to trueselftotalhealth.com. Oh, no, I'm, oh, I'm going to give everybody my email address. 
I like friends too. Just email me. <laughs> And um, I will make sure because there's a lot going on here and I'm not as young as I used to be. Total, <laughs> none of us are. Okay, I just sent that to you directly. So I'm going to send it to everyone and then we're going to sign off. Um, so if there's you guys want Karen to come, go ahead, Karen. I see a question about spinach. Go um, for it. Is told spinach oxidizes so it should be cooked instead of raw for bone the oxalates is she talking but about spinach does has oxalates and cooking can uh reduce them but we're not using any really so spinach does have um calcium and it also has iron the iron won't let you absorb so much calcium from that spinach so these these are actually better greens for your bones all right, so I took a screenshot of everybody's because technically I'm supposed to be able to get the chat, but I don't trust the system today. So if I did not, if I don't get back to you, let's say by six o'clock this evening with that information, my time, I'll send me an email saying, where is it? And I'll send it to you. Okay, let's give her some encouragement. Who would like to see Karen on our next Food is Medicine when we talk about that digestive health? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Bring her on. Bring her on. All right. Oh, that's so cool. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Well, I think we're a team now, Karen. That's great. Thank you. You're so welcome. All right. So the recording will be available in a couple of days. You can hit me or Karen up if you wish you had asked a question you were too shy to. On that note, I'm hungry. She has food. I don't. I'm <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.